So batch reactors are commonly used in the pharmaceutical industry, and they're used to just make drugs really. So usually you have at least two points at which the reactant goes in, or the two products go in to make the medicine. So to say if you have two, the two go in, a lot of times they actually react with each other, and that's an exothermic reaction, so that produces heat. So apart from having to control the temperature of also have this um, turbine in the tank and that actually is used to get a constant um, mix of the two products so it's uniform throughout and then usually you can see at the bottom here this is where the product is going to be in the tank. So this is my PNID for this and you can see that for the tank and this outside here is the jacket and the jacket is used to regulate the temperature of the tank. Now there's three, I suppose, or say five important, really important pieces here. And two of them are two temperature sensors, which you can see here. So that's their two PP100s. And both of those are uh, used in feedback loops to go back to uh, two controllers. So it's looks like you just say it's going to use two controllers in cascade here. We have three valves, and this valve here is, I have circulation. Probably a better name would be zone control valve. Uh, so that controls that the position of that valve changes depending on whether you want to cool the tank or heat it up. So if you want to cool the tank, this will be closed and the water will be forced to just circulate here. And then if you want to heat it up, it's going to allow the water to be heated by the thermostat. You also have a return turn valve is just a little bit valve that's on off and when that's open obviously water can come out of it and the flow valve brings in cold water. Now um, the, or the flow valve is a modulating valve and um, that's controlled uh, through pulse width modulation. The heater can be uh, changed voltage control and that's a phase angle control so you change the actual magnitude of the voltage of the heat. So this is the actual rake and if you ignore it, that thing that arrow there on its own. The red arrows actually show the flow of the water in that system when you're heating it up and you can see that it goes down to the heat handle. This is a PID control closed-loop system. So you can see that there's a primary controller and a secondary controller. You see there's two transducers, which is the two PP100s you see in the PID. And you have an actuator. Well, the actuator is actually going to be the, at least three valves or two valves. And so you have a secondary process and the primary process. And secondary process is the jacket and the primary process is the tank. And obviously the tank contains the product. So why use PID control? This plot here shows you uh, just it could be any kind of process that's controlled with a hysteresis on off controller. And you can see in this case Should say first of all the set point is red, like the 90 degrees if that's where you want it. The process is actually continuing oscillating between 80 degrees and 100 degrees, and that gives you an error of plus or minus 11.11%. Uh, .11%. So, with a process like that, you action like in the pharmaceutical industry, that's just not good enough. So, you use a PID controller. So, some reasons you use a PID controller. Well, you can utilize proportional integral and derivative. 